Is Disney for sale? Hey everyone, this is Kevin T. Rodriguez, film critic of iCritic.net, and let's talk about, um, well, this is a topic that was requested by one of my viewers, but it is something that I actually had kind of had in the back of my mind to talk about for a while, because it just keeps coming up, and I think we need to talk about, like, the realisticness of it happening, and that is, would Bob Iger sell Disney to Apple? Now, before we begin this discussion, let me make one thing absolutely clear. Well, two things clear, I suppose. One, I do not want to see Disney sold to anyone. I want Disney to remain its own autonomous company. I believe they are best when they are their own autonomous company. If they bought out, whether it be Apple, Universal, whatever, chances are parts of the company would be sold or there would be restructuring and they would not have the autonomy that they did before. There is a lot of advantages to Disney owning its own uh, properties and divisions, most notably with the theme parks, because if Disney owns the theme parks and there's an incentive to grow the theme parks, that's what leads to innovation in the theme parks. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. But I do believe that Disney is more valuable to the public as its own individual company than it would be under Apple, Paramount, or another conglomerate. Apple could have made like an aggressive bid. Apple definitely has more money and capital than Disney, so I don't think that's why Bob Iger was brought back. I think Bob Iger was brought back was because jo Bob Chapek was actually making the future of the company look very uncertain, and the shareholders wanted Disney to go back to making money again, not to mention Chapek was alienating some very creative people at the top. And if that kept going, there would be no creative people to make stuff for Disney. This is why I believe Bob Iger was brought back. But that is not the question of the day, and that is not what keeps coming up. I keep hearing rumors, some from reputable sources, some from sources I would consider to be fairly clickbaity, and I'm not gonna mention which one's which, that says Disney is considering selling to Apple. In fact, there have been events recently that suggest that maybe a sale is in preparation. Now, here's my two cents on that. I am leaning towards that is not going to happen, but I'm not gonna lie because we are closer to that reality than we were before. So first of all, what would be the pros for Apple owning Disney. Well, the first pro would be obviously they would get Disney's entire library content and Disney Plus can be merged into Apple TV Plus, thus making Apple TV Plus a major competitor. And the reason Apple has Apple TV Plus is because they want to sell devices like the Apple TV and the iPhone. And, you know, the Apple TV Plus complements those devices which is what they're ultimately trying to say. And being exclusive to Disney, or being the exclusive home of Disney, I should say, would be a major, major get for the company. You might also notice that with the exception of some period dramas and things like that, every character in Apple-made productions use iPhones, Macs, and Apple products. Going forward, Disney movies, unless they're set in certain time periods, would also use Apple products because that's how they would sell their devices. And of course, on an emotional level, Pixar, which Steve Jobs founded, would finally come under Apple and the circle of life would be complete. Those are the pros to Apple buying Disney. Now, what are some of the cons? Well, the cons are basically that outside of the assets, oh, I also forgot to mention the music library, of course, that would help with Apple Music. Um, the, a lot of the assets Disney has don't fit Apple's business model, and I don't know why they would run them. Obviously, I don't think Apple has any interest in being in the cruise industry, for starters. Owning ESPN is probably a get, but otherwise 
they're not interested in sports. And theme parks is something that Apple knows nothing about running theme parks. Uh, you know, you think screens are bad now. If Apple got Disneyland and Disney World, I kind of wonder if everything would be retooled to basically be iPhone centric so that you would bring your iPhone and you would use your iPhone to interact with the park. I, I just don't know what Apple would do with theme parks. They would probably either shutter the parks or they would sell them to competitors like Cedar Fair or Six Flags. And it's like, okay, you guys are on the theme parks and you can just use the Disney characters. That would not be good. Again, we're gonna talk about it in a minute. But that's the other thing. Um, the, one of the cons for Apple would be, aside from the media library, I don't think Apple has a lot of experience or even use for these other divisions that Disney has. Now, here we asked the question, would a deal like this be approved? Well, I think it would be very difficult because Apple and Disney are two of the biggest conglomerates in the world. And a company becoming that big would definitely raise some concerns with regulators. On the other hand, it's not impossible because again, Apple primarily ha competes, their, their business is devices and electronics. And they have a small, small portion of movies and TV shows. But they don't run theme parks. They don't have a merchandise division per se. They don't have a cruise ship. It's not like they're buying anything that could give them a total monopoly on entertainment. In fact, if anything, it would just make Apple a major movie player, but the number of movie players, like in terms of like big studios out there, would remain the same because Apple's a very small part of it. So, a deal like this could, in theory, go through. It would still face a lot of challenges, and I bet you there would be assets that would have to be sold off. But I think it could clear, and I think Apple could buy Disney. Are there movements being made for Apple to buy Disney? Well, that's a big question mark. For a while, I would say no, but recently, Bob Iger did say that he was considering selling several assets like ABC... ESPN, Disney Channel, FX. These are linear TV channels. Could be arguing that if preliminary talks have begun, someone at Apple could in theory say, just to let you know, we have no interest in running TV or cable networks. We are all about streaming. We are all about Apple TV Plus. So please diverge yourself of these um, assets before we consider purchasing you. This is something similar that happened, I believe, when right before Warner Brothers and Discovery merged, well, CW was put on sale, probably because Discovery was just not interested in the CW. So while Iger's comments that basically the TV networks are not core to Disney's business model, which it's kind of strange to hear him say that, because for a long time TV was core to Disney's business model. He, him trying to potentially offload the TV networks could be a sign that maybe some preliminary talks have started with Apple or some other buyer and they're starting to divest in some of these ventures. Like, okay, let's get them off the books because you don't wanna deal with them. We'll sell it, we'll get some cash, we'll make the book stronger and that will make a sale more palpable and probably less of a you know regulatory nightmare as well but at the end of the day we do not really know what is going on and as i said before i'm still leaning towards it's not going to happen but i don't want it to happen but we are certainly in a position where it's more likely to happen i think at the summer box office turned out a little differently maybe we wouldn't be having this conversation but there's been a lot of financial disasters uh, the little mermaid has barely barely eked out a profit and indiana jones and the dial of destiny it, here's a scary fact this is on track to be disney's biggest bomb and biggest money loser 
since John Carter. Let that sink in for a while. After John Carter bombed, there was some uh, shakeup on the management level and a change in philosophy at Disney. Also, movies like Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumanium did not do as well as they hoped. Although Elemental has been a surprise hit, you know, the word of mouth has kind of kept it going. And, you know, I, I think that might even be like a sign to Disney and other distributors that in the whole Puss in Boots thing where it's like, you know what, maybe you should just leave movies and theaters and see if they catch on, see if word of mouth builds them up. So even though Elemental will probably still lose money, it's become an unexpected success where it shows that the theatrical business is still alive and if you give people a chance to actually see these movies. In fact, I'm going to see Elemental again because they're still showing it in 3D, which is rare for like it to still be in 3D a few weeks later. So I'm going to go see it again in 3D and uh, enjoy myself. Overall, the box office has not been very good. Disney has lost a lot of money on these movies and that puts them in a more vulnerable position to a buyout because, you know, when you're successful, you don't need to talk about buyouts or mergers or anything like that. But when you're losing money, well, that makes things a little differently. Would this be a good thing? Now, I told you I would get to the theme parks because this is kind of like the biggest question mark with a potential Apple sale. What would happen with the theme parks? Like, would something fundamentally change? Would it be a good thing? So I'm on Diz Twitter a lot, and for lack of a better word, there is a lot of griping on Twitter about how the theme parks are being run. And we're not talking about like the prices, except for like the hardcore Disney adults who have way more money to spend than they know what to do with. Most people will agree that Disneyland and Disney World have gotten way too expensive, like way too expensive. But the biggest thing that seems to be in debate are attractions. And this is nothing new. There's always been that discussion of, oh, what happened to this ride? I miss that ride. Why'd they replace it with this one? And it's kind of reached a fever pitch because I'm noticing that there are huge Disney purist loyalists who say that Disney is changing way too much about the theme parks, Walt's vision is being lost, and they're focusing too much on screens. And I'm not saying there's absolutely nothing to that complaint because there are some complaints that are valid in that statement. But then there are some people who are saying that those attractions are too old, who cares about them anymore, they were made 50, 60 years ago, why do we care? We've advanced. Let's move on. And those complaints are also misguided. So, but there is also some truth to them. Like the older the attraction is, even though it's got like its own little charm, it is outdated. So, and of course, a lot of this centers around like Splash Mountain, where, you know, no offense if you really like Splash Mountain. I really like Splash Mountain. I think this debate has gotten way too out of hand where some people are literally saying that Disney is not the same because they got rid of Splash Mountain even though they really didn't. I mean, they're going to replace the characters and the music's going to be different, but they're not going to be redoing the track or anything like that. The, the ride, for all intents and purposes, is going to function the way it is now. But this tug of war has led a lot of people to look to another Disney theme park, Tokyo Disneyland, which is not run and owned by the Walt Disney Company. I believe it's owned by the Oriental Land Company or something like that. I, I don't know for sure, um, but it's not owned by Disney. We'll, we'll put it that way. That is a situation where Disney licenses their product to another company. And in my opinion, Tokyo Disneyland is definitely a good example of what could potentially happen um, with the Disney theme parks if Apple bought Disney and decided they didn't want anything to do with the theme parks, so we're going to license them out to Cedar Fair or Six Flags or something like that. Look, 
Tokyo Disneyland is very fun. Splash Mountain has not changed over there. That is true. And Tokyo Sea over there is definitely a unique attraction to the Disney theme parks. It's an experience that no other Disney theme park has, and it's very fun. Here's something to consider, though. You might notice that there is, if you follow the theme park news, that Tokyo Disney by far has the least amount of changes to the park. They don't really innovate that much. There's almost never any new rides. You don't read press conferences where it's like they're planning to do this with the park and they're planning to do this with the park. It kind of becomes a static. Now it's well maintained and you know, it's it's not like it's a dirty place or anything. You go there and it feels like the Disney product. You like it's clean, it's professional, it's all those things, but you don't see a lot of innovation. As a result, it's also not an especially busy park. It's never difficult to get tickets for Tokyo Disneyland if ever you're in Tokyo, and the crowds are not very high. It kind of shows what the Disney parks here could be. They could still be professional, they could still be clean, and it will probably keep a lot of the rides, like they will maintain the park and there won't be a lot of changes over the years. But here's the thing, there also won't be a lot of changes over the year. The parks won't grow because the big concern is not building attendance and making money, it's just preserving everything. As Roy Disney said during the Ron Miller era where they didn't want to make new movies and they didn't want to make new theme park attractions, if you don't want to build and innovate, you're running a museum which is pretty much what Tokyo Disney is. Again, it's fun, but there are a lot of attractions that Disneyland would have never had if they followed the Tokyo Disney model. There probably would not have been the improvements to Space Mountain. We probably would not have got Indiana Jones. There's probably no Soren or anything in, in California Adventure. like. I, I think that the theme parks would be maintained, but there would be a lot less going into them. And that this is not going to settle the debate. Some of you watching this are probably thinking, oh yeah, that's great because I don't like it when Disney changes a ride or when they take something away and for some reason they act like, you know, the rise of, of the resistance just stepped on their childhood memories even though Disney took down a restaurant and a petting zoo to put it there. They didn't even remove a main attraction or anything like that. So that's a sneak preview though of what could happen and it kind of depends what you think about that, whether or not that's a good thing or a bad thing. At the end of the day, is Iger gonna sell Disney to Apple? I sure as heck hope not. You know, Disney goes through some highs, they go through some lows, but I would ultimately rather them be an independent company and eventually build their own success. One of the problems is when companies buy other companies the soul can sometimes get lost. And I remember even talking to someone who did not think that, you know, the corporate raidership under Ron Miller's Disney leadership, which would have resulted in the company being bought and being sold for pieces, his reaction was kind of like, well, maybe Disney's legacy would have been better under someone else. And it's like, well, look, at some point, those vintage assets will always get used. They will always be sold. They will. They will always belong somewhere, but if that happened, there's no Beauty and the Beast, there's no Lion King, there's no Phineas and Fer Ferb, there's no Hannah Montana. Some would say that's a good thing. I I don't know, a lot of girls seem to like Hannah Montana. So uh, there would there'd be no California adventure. So I that's the big thing that I worry about if Apple buys Disney. Apple would probably keep the movie divisions going because they need content you know, content for Apple TV+. Plus, We would start seeing things like physical media for these movies would probably go away because why would Apple want to make it? That's not their business. The theme parks would probably become the museums that Roy Disney feared they would be. It's like, okay, whatever the attractions are there now, that's what they're going to be forever. They'll never change them. And it's, I just don't think it would be good for the company or for us as Disney fans. Now, whether, you know, the deal will get approved or not, that's hard to say.
but it probably eventually would because you know the the Activision Microsoft deal I honestly thought there was a chance that that would not go through but apparently it's going through it cleared a lot of the legal hurdles and now gaming is going to look very different as a result same thing would happen if Apple bought Disney but at the end of the day Hope it doesn't happen, but we're definitely closer to that. But I would like to know what you think of this. Do you think Apple's going to buy Disney? And what would you think of that if they did? I'd love to know. Comment below, like, favorite, share, subscribe. And as always, flame responsibly. Have a good one.